And Nick, a question for you. Uh, in the first round, I thought BJ had the first round. You really turned it on in the second. You seem to find your range with that jab. You pour beautifully with it and sets up the right hand nicely that, you know, busted up BJ's eye and uh, sent him to the hospital here tonight. Uh, do you think there was a real turning point where you started to take control in the fight? Was it somewhere maybe in that second round that you really started to find your range? <clears throat> no, I think that <clears throat> I just kind of went for it a little more in the second round, but uh, you yeah, know, my, my, my timing is, uh, was really off. I didn't get to where I was sparring, then I was meeting, and um, you know, I, I didn't get enough. I didn't spend enough time working with my trainer um, the way that I should have. And um, you know, it's back and forth a lot about a lot of things. This whole, uh, this whole, uh, you know, time I had to train for this fight. So I make it to the gym, and um, you know, I, I was there. I put in the hours. And I did everything I was supposed to do, and it was just this, the mandatory uh, uh, workouts and things that that uh, that I, you know that I that I have to do to make it through the, you know. It's just a mandatory amount of things that I do. Um, that that's what got me through it. But <clears throat> I wasn't working out 100%, and I wasn't feeling 100%. I was just doing everything. I wasn't leaving anything out. I just did everything that I normally do. I'm supposed to do, but I didn't do it with. Um, I don't know how to say. Like uh, I didn't. I didn't go in there and feel good about it. And, and uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't really get into my to my games, like my strength games, and just uh, you know, just kept pushing through every day. Usually, I, I build, you know, and um, this time I, I just pretty much um, you know push through every little bit of mandatory training that I that I have. But I missed out on a lot of good. Uh, not that I missed out. I just uh, I had a hard time. You know, I was real upset. I had to fight with uh, you know. Uh, Fighting, you know, just fighting with everybody about getting getting the right sparring. But this is the thing, you know. I, I just uh, there's people that I ain't get, you know, they're not taking care of me because they're not compensated. You know what I mean? My team needs to be compensated, and the people around me, um, you know, they're not getting nothing out of it. No, they're not getting no no air time. They're not getting <clears throat> they're not getting paid like they should. My sparring partners in, I get paid like they should. And it, that's right. Nobody, that's why nobody wants any part of this. They don't want to help me train. Um, they're not getting nothing out of it, and I don't blame them. And, and uh, nobody, nobody. Uh, it's hard to find sparring nowadays these days. You know, they, nobody's ready, or, or you know, they, they gotta be in the, the best condition or whatever before they want to come in and work out with me now. Because everybody's intimidated, and, or the trainer tells them, no, no, you, you know, you can't. Ain't good for you going there and spar with that guy. So you know these people ain't gonna do this stuff. I ain't gonna get training I need unless uh, these people start. You know, with, you know, unless these people are, are, are compensated for what their their efforts and what they're doing to uh, you know help me. It wasn't motivating for me. On top of the fact that it, it wasn't motivating for a lot of people because I wasn't motivated the way that I should have been. And um, uh, you know, on top of that, I had a lot of uh, arguments, fights with my whole camp about about you know getting the type of training and the sparring. That I needed to in the first place, and I was doing a lot of training on my own, and, and uh, that's why you know we had so much miscommunication, and I had a lot of issues with uh, making the right type of press happen and, and showing up to that last press conference that I should have been at. <clears throat> but uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. If everybody else is compensated, I can't blame them. You know, it's not their fault. You know, they work hard, and it's time that they're compensated for what they uh, what they what they do, and we wouldn't have an issue or any sort of miscommunication. Have, uh, you know, if they were, if they were, you know. Maybe, uh, right after the boat, uh, you called out George St. Pierre. Uh, you were pretty fired up calling out George. You mentioned that, you know, potentially, you know, he may have been scared or he was faking the injury. Can you expand on that? I was supposed to fight George St. Pierre. It's not a big event. And um, <clears throat> that's when my face was banged up right now because it's discouraging to have your fight. Uh, canceled and then you know back and forth about just everything uh, you know I do what I'm told but it, you know it's um, you know it's, it was hard to find a motivation that that I needed to to come to 100 percent and uh, to want to do this uh, you know it's hard it, it, that's just I don't, I don't mean to sit here and make excuses all day but that was the fight that I was looking for and um, like you know, I said it before. I thought maybe uh, I don't. I didn't mean to, you know, 
give myself all kinds of credit or act like I'm something or you know because um, <clears throat> apparently I'm not I'm not too important but I think that uh, if I were in his position I would have wanted to uh, you know fight fight the strike force champion you know they made a big whole big deal out of that unifying the titles and um, you know and it, it was after a while, I realized, man, I'm, you know, I'm fooling myself thinking I'm somebody here. So, um, you know, because apparently he didn't think that it was important. The fight against me, really fight, um, you know, he'd rather have a different, you know, he'd rather fight Carlos Conduit or, you know, I would have said, hey, I want, I want to fight. I always want to go for the, the best fight. That's why I'm always calling out George St. Pierre. I don't have anything against George St. Pierre. I think he's a great fighter. I think he's a nice guy, just like everybody else. You know, and uh, he's a great role model. I would love to. I would love to be that too if I was in that position. I just unfortunately haven't ever had the opportunity and the right people behind me to uh, push me to be that type of, uh, you know, that type of fighter or that type of role model or what you, uh, you know, what you like to see. Okay. I agree. Yeah. La la last question to you. Then I know you're dissatisfied with your camp and you're and you're unhappy about things. Does that mean some things might change or you might? For the GSP camp, maybe train differently, get new people. What do you think you'll do? No, I, I'm not unhappy with my camp. I love my camp. I love my trans partners. You know, they are. Uh, they got to. They got to do them too. <clears throat> you know what I mean? It's about time they. Uh, you know, everybody. Everybody needs to do them. You know, it's. Uh, we we all we all equally working the same. We're all trying to trying to uh, you know to excel at the next level, and uh, it's not their fault. I just, uh, I just think that uh, you know they can get more credit for for helping me out, and they can come. You know, they could be more compensated for for all the work that they do to help me out. And if they were, then people would recognize that, and I would have a better um, and a you know stronger team behind me. And um, but I like you know I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the strongest team. Um, you know, uh, considering my circumstances through this whole. You know, fight life that I've been living. Um, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without you know Jake Shields, Gilbert Melendez, and uh, Caesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Um, I w this, this ain't just me. This is, this is them too. This is my little brother. This is Caesar Gracie. This is Jake Shields. Makes sense. And if I could follow up with Nick real quick, Nick, uh, obviously you talked about the difficulties of, of finding proper training partners, and they need to be compensated. Uh, Pardon my ignorance, but isn't that something that's usually taken care of by the fighter or in his camp? I mean, who should be compensating those guys, and, and what's the fix to that problem? Um, I don't know. Maybe there's not enough money in the sport, man. You got Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather making $25 million. Um, you know, he can't stop the double leg. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to school to learn how to do that shit. I had to go, you know, I had to work hard, and I had to... I had to, you know, study every aspect, and um, that's what we're doing right here. And I think that if I was making a tiny piece of that, that everybody I know would be compensated. Everybody I know, including my own family. Dana, if I can expand on that a little bit, because we're please. Talking, well, we're, we're get not, the mic. Hey, let's go, Susan. Take thank the mic. If I can expand on that a little bit, I think part of the frustration really isn't work. You know, it's more to do with boxing and, and as and most of you people know we were supposed to work out with the Andre Ward camp and uh, the guys there the professional boxers aren't going to box with us and, and that's part of the, the problem here you know they all want X amount of compensation and, and, and Nick didn't get the boxing in for this one Andre Ward got cut he was out of the fight so there was no training with Andre Ward and there was no training in that whole camp over there with Nick Diaz and I think that was the some one of the things he's very yeah well if you if this is where we're going to do this. Uh, you know, when you talk about boxing and what boxing means, there's a handful of guys that make Floyd Mayweather money. There's actually a couple guys that make Floyd Mayweather. There's two. You got Pacquiao and you got Floyd. And then the rest of the guys, there's thousands of guys that make nothing. You know, and when you talk about being compensated for sparring, that is what you guys do. You guys set your camp and, then, and you, you build your camp and you bring guys in for sparring. Everybody does. That's what boxing does too. And Yes, you might compensate your guys, and if you're fighting under the, the promoter and he pays for it, he takes that out of your check. If you don't show up for six flights, you miss six flights to show up for a press conference, the promoter charges you for those six flights. We don't.
we pay for them. We take them on the chin every time you miss a flight, and, and the list goes on and on. Believe me, I've heard the, the arguments from the guys in the sport about boxing. If you're pissed off at what's going on here, go try boxing and see how that works out for you. What's Andre Ward making a fight? I don't know what he's making, but yeah. and I think we're going to the wrong direction. No, I hear you. But our frustration is not to do with our tight circle. Is what Nick is trying to say. That I think <coughs> most people here don't know the, the whole story. Our frustration is with training partners coming over from boxing. Yeah, and, we're and, trying to mesh the two and, together. And the reality is, when you get to a level that Nick Diaz is, I 100% I get it. Who the hell wants to go over and spar with him? You get their head punched in for five rounds. Probably not many people. He's an MMA fighter. And, and, and that's yeah. part of the thing that's happening over where we're at. I hear you. No, I, I hear you. When you get to that level, it's tough. Fight itself. Uh, the first round, you know, when BJ landed on you, did you make an adjustment? Was there anything that you felt like you weren't doing? Technically, it seemed in the second round you got him against the cage and you really had a lot of success there. No, I think, you know, I, I had plenty of ways I could have controlled him in this fight and, um, you know, I just found my way into a strategy that would have worked for me the whole fight. Um, you know, I could have finished that fight. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I was fighting stupid. I was doing stupid stuff out there. I was taking punches on purpose. And uh, I, this is, there's, there's no reason for that. And uh, I'm, I just, uh, I, can do a lot, I, can, I can look a lot better than that. I can do a lot better than that. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, that's what you know. I would like to do. Do you feel like it had you, as Caesar referenced, had the chance to work with Andre Ward, that some of the punches you did get hit with that you would have been able to block? Oh yeah, I wouldn't. There's, I didn't have any sort of uh, workouts like a, how I have in the past. I wouldn't. Have, I would have come out ten times better than I look tonight. That's for sure. I don't take punches like that when you're working out with uh, with guys like Andre Ward and. Uh, the guys even that are working out with on reward, you know. Um, if I could have got any of the sparring that I could have had in the past, I would have been a lot more confident and uh, just have been known that I've worked out with some of these guys that are, you know, that are at that, that top level. <clears throat> was it a bittersweet feeling at all? It was a great win for you, maybe your biggest win, not, uh, one of your biggest wins anyways, but then you know it could have been the championship and you could have the belt around your waist tonight. Does that make it bittersweet? I don't really know how, how you mean by that. But. Just, you know, is it disappointing where you feel like, you know, if circumstances had worked the right way, you might be the UFC and Strike Force champion? I was trying to say, if Dana didn't fuck you, you know, and pull you <laughs> this fight out from you, would it have been a better night if, if Dana didn't jump up your ass? Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't think I said that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe, win or lose. You know, I mean, going out, I haven't mean, taken no fights off, you know, I haven't taken no time. I've been fighting every three months since I was. Uh, since I was 17 years old, you know, everybody else that did that, they only they stopped me one time, uh, six month break, and that yeah. was it. Other than that, I've been fighting every time, never backed out of a fight in my life. You show me somebody else has done that, hasn't pulled some bullshit about injury. I've been injured my last, all these last fights, even this one. And I didn't pull out, you know. I had no reason to want to fight. I could just go on. I'm depressed about this whole not fighting, not getting paid, but I wanted to get paid, um, you know. And, I all the, you know, I, I could have pulled out on any of this injury. My knee hurts. Oh, you know, my hamstring. My hamstrings. I got the same issues, man. 